What's up, family? What's up, family? It's me, your boy, your urban sports guru. Guru, salute the whole team. Ah, uh, this is week three. Week three of the NFL. There's a lot of things going on right now. Week three, and um, I'm going to get to my picks. Last week was a good week. I for, let me apologize for all the audio issues that's been happening in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've rectified that situation. We're going to get to the business. Let's get to the butter right now. First game, Cincinnati in Buffalo. And I got to say this, Josh Allen, my eyes on you. I got you. I see you. I see you. Not only do I see that Buffalo defense, that, that is a problem. That is a difference maker. Shout out to Sean, head, head coach Sean McDermott. Josh Allen, there are times where I look at him in the game where he looks like a franchise quarterback. And there are also times in the game where, you know, like in the Jets, when he plays a good defense, four turnovers in one half. Go figure. But when I look at what that defense should be able to do, against Cincinnati, even though Cincinnati's been chucking it for a lot of yards, but they've been behind so much. Cincinnati's still got some studs defensively. You know, Geno Atkins, one of the best in the game. That's why I don't think this game will be a runaway, but I expect Buffalo with the win. Next, we have Josh Rosen. Y'all know how much I like Josh Rosen, and y'all know how much I never liked that Miami situation. And guess what? What do you see in Miami? Shannon Sharp called them the best college team in the land. You know what? I'm starting to think they might not be the best college team in football. Best college team in the country. Like, seriously, they're bad. They're remarkably bad. And it's sad that you have a black coach, black GM, set up like this. In particular, the black coach. Because if they don't start playing like professionals... Brian Flores will not even get the opportunity to coach the team that they're tanking to be. Mark my words when I say that. Now, I don't like the situation for Josh Rosen. I think he's a talented quarterback. It was him and Baker Mayfield was my two favorites coming out of that draft. But the situation matters, and he has not had a good situation for him. And now he's stuck in the, even the most horrible situation in, in the NFL right now. And he's going on the road to play the Cowboys, who are loaded all over the place. Cowboys with the win. To call this game a lock will be an understatement. Cowboys with the win. Then we got Denver going to Green Bay. The Green Bay defense, my eyes on you. Y'all have impressed me these first couple of weeks. And I'm taking y'all because of you guys versus Joe Flacco. I do not believe in Joe Flacco. I don't. To think he's going to be able to come up the Lambo and show up, even though your offense is still working things out, I think the defense will make enough plays and hold the game, hold the score low enough for the Packers to get the win. Now, an interesting game is Atlanta versus Indianapolis. Indianapolis this is the best team that they've had as far as across the board. Because before it was just Andrew Luck and everybody playing off of that. This is the best team they've had. It's just that now they don't have Andrew Luck. You have Jacoby Brissett, who I think is a suitable quarterback. The question is, how good? This is his proving ground year. Because before when he played, he played with a horrible team. This is a horrible team. I don't think they're as talented as the rest of the as the rest of the division. What they do have is they probably have the best offensive line in the division. If Houston had their offensive line, game over. But anyway. Um Atlanta, I think, is loaded. I love the way their defense is playing, particularly up front. You know, Grady Jarrett is owning, is earning every single coin that he is getting paid. And um, I really like that matchup to see Jarrett against, you know, the guard in Indianapolis. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch, to see those two, go, two guys going at it, Quentin Nelson. But I like Matt Ryan better. I like J Jacoby Brissett. I do. And these are the kind of games that Matt Ryan needs to play like the former MVP. These are those games. And I'm taking Atlanta. Now, Oakland versus Minnesota. Minnesota's defense is loaded. Loaded. All three levels. All three levels. Then they're running the football with Jared, which I, uh, Cook. Running the football. Dalvin Cook. I'm sorry. Offensive line play. Everything is working. Kirk Cousins is thinking it out. Last year, 
Kirk Cousins was balling, everything else wasn't working. That's the only thing they need at this point to take them from being a good team to being a Super Bowl contender because all the talent is there. All the rest of the talent, all the pieces is there. The quarterback play is what's making Dallas a Super Bowl contender. Quarterback play is going to make Minnesota take that step to be a real Super Bowl contender. And you play in Oakland, Oakland's going to fight you. They're going to. They're going to fight you. John Gruen got them boys coming ready to play. I'm going to take Minnesota. Now, the game everybody wants to watch, and I can't knock them for it, Baltimore versus KC. Now, this is going to be the first game where we get to see exactly how good Lamar Jackson is. Now, Lamar Jackson has caught my attention because the jump he's made from last year to this year has been stupendous. I salute him for that because I didn't see, I didn't think he had this in him. But he's been doing that against bad teams. But he's been doing that with some. I'm trying to I'm trying to say this as politely as possible. He's been doing it with some real GED reads. Now, KC doesn't have the best defense in the world, but it's different when you're doing it against a team that at least has an adequate defense. KC does have that, and they're putting you in positions where you have to score. They've Baltimore has had no pressure on them, none. They've had no pressure these first couple of games. They basically have had two preseason games to get their kinks out. And like I said, you need that to work on the, all these things you worked on in the offseason to get this shit on film. You need that. You need it. Damn right you need it. Dallas basically is having a third game. You need that shit to get it on film. Is it going to work? Is it going to work enough where you be able to keep up with Patrick Mahomes, the video game? That's right. I call him every week. Y'all watch me. I call him Human Highlight Film. He's a video game. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in football right now. I'm taking the Chiefs. Jets versus New England. And I was just talking. Shout out to my, shout out to my girl, Leona. Love you, baby. Um, about <laughs> Le'Veon Bell. I mean, you left the Steelers. And I can't knock you for leaving the Steelers. But you went to the Jets. The Jets defensively, especially when C.J. Mosley was on the field, I liked what I saw. I really did. I really liked what I saw. The problem is, offensively, I think Sam Darnold's adequate. I just don't think he'll be a star. And they don't have, they don't have a number one receiver. And now Sam Darnold's out. The Jets offensive line isn't great. Decent, not great. I knew it was going to be an adjustment because he ran behind three all pros in Pittsburgh. And with his running style, his, you know, patient, 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 patient running style, it was going to be an adjustment. Now to him to do this against New England, the way their defense is looking this year, they don't need A.B. They never needed A.B. Bye. But <laughs> this game is going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly early taking Patriots. Now, Detroit at Philly. Now, it has not gone past my attention that Devon Kennard, former Giant, is like number two in the NFL in sacks. Former Giant. When I look at the Giants, how they have a hard time rushing the quarterback, and you had this guy on your roster, barely let him rush the quarterback. He goes to Detroit, and he's killing quarterbacks. I'm just saying. Um, Detroit is, like I said, they're loaded on both sides of the ball. It's all going to depend on, depends on Matthew Stafford. He's kind of in that Kirk Cousins buzzle, bubble, in my opinion, where they're going to put up yards, they're going to put up stats, but they're going to put up wins. Are they going to put up wins? When I look at a Philly team that is hurting, Sean Jackson won't be playing. That means a lot of the big plays is gone. That means they're going to have to methodically work their way up the field. Now, Ag Aguilar dropped the game when they touched down. This could be a different conversation had he caught that ball. However, Philly's front front four, the front line, does a great job against the run and getting after the quarterback. Carry on Johnson might have a hard day. It's going to be all on Matthew Stafford. So it's going to be Matthew Stafford versus Carson Wentz. 
As long as Carson Wentz is still healthy, I'm taking Carson Wentz. Philly. Carolina versus Arizona. I take no pride in saying this, but I told y'all Cam Newton will not make it through the season. He will not play all 16 games. I told y'all this. Y'all call me a hater. I told y'all this shit, and you called me a hater. Y'all called me a hater. Not a hater. I just speak the truth. Cam has taken too much punishment throughout his career. All this, he's you know, trying to be Superman and all this shit. He's taking way too much punishment. Here we are, week three. He can't even stay on the field. God bless him, and I wish him the best. But th part of it is the organization's fault, and another part of it is what I've always said. I don't think they do a great job coming up on teaching particularly black quarterbacks the quarterback position properly. They make it out to be like a, a Rucker Park way of playing quarterback when all that does is get guys killed. All that does is gets guys hurt. Gets guys hurt. Because the quarterback position can't keep getting hit like that. To me, the quarterback position is all about how fast you process information and get rid of the football. It's not about how much you can run. The running is extra. Think of it like this. It's like in basketball... Having a seven-footer that can shoot three-pointers. But he can't block shots and he can't rebound. He's seven feet. He can't defend. Can't block shots and he can't rebound. But you can shoot threes. Shooting threes is supposed to be the extra. The icing on the cake. Not the end-all, be-all. A quarterback who can run is supposed to be the extra. The icing on the cake. Not the end-all, be-all. And that's what motherfuckers need to get right. Now they got a backup quarterback. I still like Arizona's defense. Kyler Murray, I think he's going to get his first win. Taking the Cardinals. Now Giants versus Tampa. Tampa, 10 days to prep. Getting Daniel Jones, not Eli. Bruce Arians has a chance to... You could be 2-1 and one when you look at, look at what New Orleans is doing. Look what Carolina position they in. Look at Atlanta. They're 500. So, you have opportunity. I don't think Eli was the problem this year. He's had his moments, but the offensive line hasn't been terrible. And when you take into consideration, I think the defense is just so bad that they can't keep up score. With the way they're giving up. They just literally can't. Giants don't have the firepower. They don't. Now more efficiency can help. And um, I won't be surprised if we saw that tomorrow on Sunday. With a big game from Saquon. I'm taking the Giants. To beat Tampa. Houston versus the Chargers. Chargers are very, very talented. But they lost Hunter Henry again. He always hurt. Then they lose. You know, of course, Melvin Gordon's still not there. Yeah, I know how much I love Deshaun Watson. If you can please stop him from getting hit so much, you have a real chance in the AFC. You should win that division. I like their defense better than I like the Chargers defense, even though I like Bosa very much. I think if Bosa was to compliment the J.J. Watt, he would put a hell of a lot more better numbers than Jadavion Clowney did. That's just me. I'm just saying. Um, I'm taking Houston in that game. Because I think Watson's going to make some plays late. Taking Houston. Then you got Pittsburgh. No Big Ben. You have no Le'Veon. You have no AB. You have no Big Ben. This equals no chance. Sorry, but it equals no chance. I'm taking San Fran. New Orleans versus Seattle. Now, Sean Payton has been called a genius for a long time. For a very long time. My thing is, when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback, he makes you look like a genius. Because he is able to properly execute everything you're writing down. Now, I like Teddy Bridgewater. I do. question is, can you come up with enough concepts 
with Teddy Bridgewater and, of course, also Taysom Hill. Can you come up with enough creative things that can generate enough points to beat a Seattle team in Seattle with the 12th man? And my MVP pick, my pick for MVP, Russell Wilson? Not this week. I'm taking Seattle. The hardest game for me to pick this week was Rams going to Cleveland, dog pound, Sunday night football. That's the hardest game for me to pick. Y'all know how much I love me some Aaron Donald. And I think Aaron Donald gets the cheat, gets the Cleveland Browns offensive line is going to be a problem. Baker Mayfield, you will meet Aaron Donald tomorrow night. I'm just saying, going out on the limb and I'm saying it. Um, I like the matchup of Miles Garrett, my pick for defensive player of the year, against Andrew Whitworth, with the Pro Bowl left tackle and for the Rams. I really like that matchup. I want to see how that plays out. I think the difference between the Rams defense this year is they got playmates on the linebacker. Littleton is playing well. But also, you got Clay Matthews. Clay Matthews has been an all-world linebacker since being in the league. And I like Cleveland, but I'm taking the Rams. I'm taking the Rams. Monday night, Washington at home versus Chicago. Chicago is my preseason pick to go to the Super Bowl out of the NFC. I'm not wavering from that. I think their defense will force a turnover too from Washington. And it's only going to be a matter of time. The more they keep this up, it's just going to be a matter of time before you're going to have to play Dwayne Haskins. It's similar to the situation that they have in Denver. Joe Flacco wants your 0 3. On four or whatever, before they end up playing that other kid. Now, the other kid isn't as ready as Dwayne Askins, but Washington, in case Keenum's not a bad quarterback, he is not. I'm not going to say he, he's at fault because he looked damn good week one. Damn good. But uh, I think the Chicago's defense is going to carry them to this win, just like they did last year. It's going to. They're going to give them enough weeks for the offense to get their mojo going. And uh, Matt Nagy, this is this is on you. Get that mojo working. The defense is going to be fine. Eventually, I say in another two weeks, you're going to see Dwayne Haskins taking Chicago. Those are my picks. Make sure you hit the like. Make sure you hit the subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're feeling. It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. Let me know how you feel. Guru, salute. I'm out.